friends, our, our Lord says, where two or three are gathered his, in his name, he is there with us. And so in this time of not being able to gather together, we hold on to that promise that where we are gathered, whether it's in the same physical space or in our own homes, it is our Lord that binds us together and brings us and draws us to this place. So let us worship our Lord on this second Sunday of Easter. And um, to get us into the spirit of this Easter season, we are going to sing together our introit, which is Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks. And then we'll move into our call, our, um, our, um, call to worship. So please join us. It is going to be up on our screens in a second. <laughs> hear the good news of our Savior Jesus Christ. We thought he was dead, but he has risen from the dead and lives forevermore. Let us bow down and worship him. Let us bring our praises and joyful hearts to our Lord. We love the Lord who has heard our cries and healed our souls. We love the Lord who lives and reigns with God. Amen. Now let us sing together our him number 151 if you're falling home and or crown him with many crowns <laughs> Friends, when we come and confess our lives to our Lord, we are calling on God who promises not only to hear us, but to heal us with forgiveness and hope. So I invite you to join me as we pray together our prayer of confession. 
together. Together we say, Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the Riven Friends, we know this for certain. We are forgiven by our gracious God. This good news never ceases to astound us, no matter how many times we hear it. For this promise is passed on to us, so that we may share it with everyone that we meet. For we are forgiven, so that we might offer, offer forgiveness and peace to those around us. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are now going to turn to scripture. So as we turn to Luke's gospel, I invite us to pray together. Lord, open the meaning of the scriptures to, you opened it to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and set their hearts ablaze. We ask that you do the same to us, that by the power of your spirit, kindle our hearts as we hear your word proclaimed, that we may receive your joy this day. Amen. It might be the hand sanitizer that I put on my fingers before I started to make sure the communion was fine, but my, my touchpad on my laptop isn't moving as smoothly as the last few weeks, so I apologize. But let us turn to God's gospel. In Luke, we hear... Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third de day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they neared the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sights. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? 
that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been, na- been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Friends, this is the good news we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Thanks be to God. So for us, our lives have advanced a week since the Easter celebrations, but for the two disciples on their way to Emmaus, it is still Easter morning. These two disciples have witnessed all the events in Jerusalem. Jesus' triumphant entry on a donkey that we now call Palm Sunday. His trial and the way the soldiers belittled, mocked, and beat him. From a distance, they had seen him hung on a cross like a common criminal. They were not able to make out his words, but they saw him breathe his last breath and die. They watched Jesus, his body laid into a tomb. As the ancient Apostles' Creed states, he was crucified, dead, and buried. He was dead. And they were now on their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus. There is a bit of humor in where they are headed. Jesus and the angels both told Jesus' followers to go to Galilee, for he was going ahead of them. But these two are heading directly west out of Jerusalem, which is also the same direction that is perpendicular to the Jerusalem-Galilee road. But it doesn't matter what road they picked. It's more about what happens on the road. Here they are, Cleopas and his companion, as exhausted and discouraged. They trug the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they walk, they aren't silent like the women last Sunday that we heard. They are talking. They are talking about their hopes that have been dashed, what they had longed for and what they had hoped for. They speak and of their shared disappointments. They voice their broken dreams. They put into speech their unrealized hopes. And it's here that Jesus meets them in their disappointment and exhaustion and brokenness. It is here that Jesus meets them. He doesn't come to them in Jerusalem where they were, and he doesn't wait for them at home where they are going. He doesn't even task them to do, to make some holy pilgrimage or to take on some highest feat. Rather, Jesus meets them where they are, on the road, mid their journey, right smack in the middle of all the pain, frustration, and sadness that threatens to overwhelm them. It is here that Jesus comes alongside them and butts into their conversation. He stops them in their tracks. Maybe they stop because they're shocked that anyone is talking to them. But they are also shocked that he doesn't know what has been taken on, what has taken happened in Jerusalem. And so they tell him. They tell him all that has happened in the last several days. They tell him what they had hoped for. They say, but we had hoped. There's so much said in these four words. But we had hoped. They speak of a future that is not to be, a dream that is created but not materialized. But we had hoped. It speaks of a future that is closed off, not now irreverent, irreverent and dead. It's not just the tragedy of what happened that hurts, but the gaping hole of all that could have been that hasn't and won't happen. But we had happened, but we had hoped. I keep coming back to these words, not because I enjoy wallowing in them or in the, the shadows of them, but because they ring true. We had hoped. Of course, it's not the only truth in our lives. There is so much in this life that is beautiful and daring and confident, inspiring, 
and so much more, and it all deserves our gratitude. But along with all of those is also disappointment, heartbreak, and failure. Sometimes we gloss over these heartbreaks, especially in the church. Or maybe we just don't gloss over them. We just want to kind of hurry and quick towards the resolution. We want to avoid the pain. We want to get to that resurrection. We want to be those Easter people. We want to get to the hope. And so we want to rush past this part of the story to get to the burning hearts. We want to rush past and get to celebrate with the disciples their encounter of the risen Christ. But before there is a resurrection, there is a cross. Before there are burning hearts, there are broken ones. Friends, that is part and parcel of being human. That's part of being the broken people that we are. Our hearts break. And it isn't the broken heartedness of us. It isn't that brokenness that our risen Christ comes, walking along with us on the road, Astonished that we don't see as he sees. Astonished that we don't see as we ought. But not abandoning us, being there with us, teaching us the scriptures that we, so that we understand. Sharing his presence through bread and wine. Granting, giving us burning hearts that start to bend those broken hearts. And prompt us back into the world. So that we don't just say we had hoped. That we had hoped. Right? We prompted back into the world with Christ, knowing that the things that have been taken from us in this pandemic isn't the full story. That it's okay to have cracked dreams and cracked hearts. It's okay to not have it all together. We don't have to have all our emotions figured out. We don't need to understand all of God's ways. Because Jesus comes in to us in that brokenness. Jesus comes to us in that confusion and sadness. Jesus comes and finds us, whether we recognize him or not. Whether we are following his instructions to go to Galilee, or even if we know the way to Galilee or not. Jesus comes and finds us. Because this story about a trip to Emmaus by two of Jesus' followers is also our story. Because no matter what we had hoped or what we hope, Christ is risen and he comes back to meet us. He comes back to meet us in our brokenness. He comes back to meet us in our sadness. He comes back to meet us and to help mend all that is broken with his abundant life, with his grace. So friends, no matter what road we find ourselves on, know that we do not travel it alone, for Christ is there with us. Whether we see him now or only realize that he was there with us, Christ walks this journey with us this beautiful, broken journey that we all take, that we all be held together in God's love and embrace. Amen. I now invite us to affirm our faith using the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism. It says, what is your only comfort in life and in death? That I belong, body and soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful savior, Jesus Christ, who at the cost of his own blood has fully paid for all my sins and has completely freed me for the, from the dominion of the devil that he protects me so well that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, that everything must fit his purpose for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready 
from now on to live for him. Amen. Friends, we journey together in ways we do that is by being connected in our joys and our concerns, our prayers and our love for one another. So I invite us to share those um, as we have them. Um, you can unmute yourself and speak them, or if you want to use the chat, please um, share those. I would like to thank everyone um, for all your good thoughts and prayers while my husband was in the hospital. Uh, we're very grateful that he has survived and uh, is now starting to thrive. So I just want to thank you. That's a great joy for us. Prayers for Teresa's family. Pray for our country and our world. When it's, when... Yeah. Also prayers for the Plymers family um, and, and our church family as we grieve um, Betty, Betty's loss. And we also, as we celebrate how, um, how much she has influenced us and uh, how we will keep her legacy um, as a fellow witness of Christ. Let us pray. We offer our prayers through Christ, who is risen from the dead, who lives and reigns forever and prays for us in heaven. Through Christ, we pray for the church. Lord, let us be people of joy, living witnesses to the power of the resurrection and the good news of your grace and peace. Lord, let us know that joy does not just mean being happy and when all things are going well, but joy also is found in knowing that we belong to you and that our lives belong to you. Lord, help us to know and hold on to those promises. Through Christ, we pray for the earth. From the dust of the damaged earth, raise up your new creation full of beauty wonder, and glory. Through Christ, we pray for nations, for all nations. Let the message of your saving power spread throughout the world, that the dominion of death is no more. And Lord, we pray that you might help us remember our common humanity, our common bonds of your people, Lord, we know that this pandemic has not skipped any nation. And so as we pray for our own nation and our own people and of wisdom and guidance and strength as we continue in the storm, we also pray for our brothers and sisters across the world. Might we all have hope that we all Hold on to you. May we all use you as our anchor. Lord, we pray for Kelly. We ask that you continue to offer her healing and restoration and good health. Give her your strength and your hope. We pray for Teresa's family. Surround them with your love and grace and give them your strength. Lord, we pray for Bob and Veronica and Kristen and Betty's granddaughters and great grandchildren, all our family, whether it's biological or church family. We ask that you Hold us in our sadness and in our grief, and also encourage us 
as Betty encouraged us in her walk with you. For as many times as she was uncertain of what things were going on and she was never uncertain of you. And so Lord, we thank you for that witness. Lord, we pray for all those that have been experiencing health and healing and thriving. Lord, it's with celebration that we lift up to you, Artie and Susan, and we just thank you. And ask your continued blessings. Lord, we ask your blessings on all our loved ones. Lord, we ask that you give hope to those who wait for good news. Those that are waiting for their mourning to turn into dancing and their sorrows into joys. Lord, we ask that they might feel your presence in those moments of waiting. And that we might feel your presence in our moments of waiting. For Lord, we know that you come to us in every moment, whether we see you or not, you are there. And so we ask that you continue to work in our world and that your mighty works might be among us. For we pray this through Christ, our living Lord. Amen. So friends, together, we are the family of God. And as such, we support each other with our gifts, our monetary, our spiritual, our physical, our emotional gifts. We share them with one and each other so that we can care for each other and support each other. And so I invite you to consider all the gifts that you've been given all that God has granted you with and has given you custody of, to be good stewards of during this time. Um, and not just limit them to kind of money, but also spiritual and emotional gifts that you have and resources. I invite you to think about ways that you can commit those to God's family today and, and throughout the week, knowing that each gift is worthy in God's eyes, however we give and however we are called to give. I know that um, in this time of uncertainty, we are all wanting to help in some ways, but never really sure how to help. Um, so I have some suggestions or some just opportunities to, to pray about. One is to just connect with each other. Um, we have Zoom gatherings. We kind of, Wednesday has become our church day, our church check-in day. So check in with each other at 10 a.m. on Zoom and, and 7.30 p.m. Um, we also have a gathering for the kids at 4. Um, these aren't mandatory. Don't feel pressured to do these. These are just here options that, to help each other connect. Um, you know, this is a storm and we all have different levels of stress. So if this is going to help you um, whether the storm, this pandemic, then please come and join us. Um, but if, if you just don't have the emotional energy uh, to join a Zoom meeting, that's okay. Um, but I encourage you to keep reaching out to each other, keep checking in on each other. Um, also, too, uh, I just put up together, once again, the Sparta Helps Healthcare Heroes. Um, Lois's granddaughter is putting together this fund with some others to help funnel resources to our healthcare heroes here in this area. So if you would like to help so sponsor that, there is the GoFundMe page. Um, also this week, we got a notice from Family Promise. They have an emergency relief fund going because um, they are receiving more and more calls each day from people experiencing, you know, housing crises, um, having, you know, just kind of needing help. Um, and so even though, you know, utilities and our companies and landlords are kind of not evicting and, and kind of helping people with their bills right now. Um, when this pandemic ends, they'll still be behind and they'll still not have had work. Um, so just if you feel called or led to help um, those in our neighbor, those in our county needing help with um, housing and security in that way, um, there is that link for you to donate or you can just go to the Family Promise uh, website. 
Friends, I invite us as we think about what we can give this week and how we can give back um, of all the gifts that God has given us, I invite us to pray this prayer of dedication together, saying, Lord, I ask your blessing on these gifts and on these people. Please be with them. Give them courage. Use these gifts to help others as you have healed and helped us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And then I invite us to sing together the doxology. as disciples asked Jesus to stay with them. It was in the breaking of the bread that their eyes were opened and they saw our Lord. And so this Sunday we are coming together and sharing together the Lord's Supper. So if you kind of forgot that, I'm going to talk for a little bit, so a little longer. So go and get your bread and your juice and um, come back and invite us and come back and join us. And if you have it ready there besides you, then I invite you to think about this joyful feast that we are invited to come and be part of, that God invites us. I usually stand at this table in the sanctuary and say that we come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, to gather at Christ's table. And this time that we are gathering in the east and in the west, the north and the south, we get to think of this gathering in a different way. Instead of physically being in one space, we get to think about how Christ's table extends to wherever we are. That it is really not our table. It is not the table of the First Presbyterian Church of Sussex. That it is our Lord's table. And a table that extends to all those who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. So let us come to this feast our Lord has prepared. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, wherever we may be, and upon these your gifts of bread and juice, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now in the name of Christ, let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And after giving thanks to God, find the bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, let us take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And after the meal was done, 
Our Lord, in the same way, took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. So, friends, take, drink, remembrance of our Lord. Friends, I invite us to share together the prayer after communion. Together we say, Mighty God, holy is your name. We thank you for gathering us at your table and feeding us with the bread of life. As we leave this table to go to the many places where you call us, send your spirit to accompany us so that we may share in your magnificent work, lifting up those who are laid low showing mercy to all in need of human kindness, and feeding the bodies and hearts of all those who are hungry. Amen. Friends, as we leave this time of worship, um, I invite those, uh, it's, the, it's a weird time, right? Um, and we're not able to grieve the same way and pay respects the same way that we used to, um, or that we would if we were not practicing social distancing. So I invite those that um, would like to stay on a little bit longer as we uh, share together um, stories and remembrances and just share and support one another as we grieve and celebrate um, B Betty and her life, since there won't really be able to be a time in the near future um, to do that. Um, let us, you know, take this moment afterwards. So if you would like to stay on a little bit after the postlude and, and um, share with each other and support each other, please, please do that. But friends, know, know that as we go on this journey, wherever and whatever happens, that we do not go alone. For the grace of our risen Lord is there with us. The, God, the love of God who raised him from the dead and the power of the Holy Spirit who fills the world with new life, blesses us, walks with us, and keeps us. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm.